come and you go. African Americans are one third of all of the Muslims in America. And there's no one who's more familiar with the many faces of bigotry and racism in America than African American Muslims. I embrace Islam. That at the age of 20, I've been a Muslim, a Sunni Muslim, ever since. And these two dimensions of my humanity, religion, on one hand, and the struggle for justice, on the other hand, are at the core of my being today at uh, 66 years old. The Mosque of Islamic Brotherhood was first incorporated in the borough of Brooklyn, but then because of our historical tie to the Muslim Mosque Incorporated and to Malcolm X, we moved and established ourselves in Harlem, uh, 1970, 71. You're living at a time of extremism, a time of revolution, a time when there's got to be a change. People in power have misused it, and now there has to be a change, and a better world has to be built. Because I was raised in a spirit of resistance, and because this congregation uh, was born out of a spirit of resistance, we have always uh, reflected that in our worship, in the sermons that I give here. Because we are traumatized people, man. I know that. We are traumatized people with all kind of hurts and pains and trauma. And when people are traumatized, you have to go easy with them. But you also have to... The African-American Muslim community has the same challenges and the same obstacles as the non-Muslim African-American community. Struggling around issues of housing, against gentrification, police brutality, police uh, abuse of power affects Muslims in the African-American community just like it affects non-Muslims. No peace! No no Five years ago today, one of the sons of our community 28-year-old Muhammad Ba was executed by members of the NYPD, just as they executed Amadou Diallo, just as they wanted to execute Yusuf Salam, one of the Central April Park 19, Five. 1989, shortly before 9 o'clock in the evening, a 28-year-old investment banker... I've been a member of the masjid for probably over 30 years. When this case first happened to me, I was 15 years old. Imam Talib, he made sure that his part was always there. And by his part, I mean the social justice component that your religious leader can play is important. A serial rapist confessed to the crime 13 years after the attack. His DNA matched, and the five teens' convictions, they were vacated. I don't remember Imam Talib ever saying, hey, did you do this? You know, I remember when Imam Talib would be called, say for instance, into the courthouse. They were trying to make us the, the worst of the worst. So we, we were falling in the category of sexual, sexual predators. And so Imam Talib was called in as a character witness to make sure that the, the courts knew that I was a productive citizen in society. I was a value in society. The predominant emotion in the African-American Muslim community is not fear, it's resistance. Today we march for justice for Muhammad Ba. Muhammad Ba. Because there's nothing that anyone can say to us that we have not, you know, been there, done that. We do face a kind of double whammy discrimination that is our reality. We are 
black twice in America, as if being black once wasn't enough of a challenge. We call upon the police commissioner of the city of New York yes, to enforce the law. Yes. We call upon bigotry is always based on fear and ignorance. The forces who exploit fear and ignorance in America have always used those things as tools of division. So we must combat them by coming together, by combating uh, division with unity by combating hatred with love, by combating otherness with sameness. We came to America in different ships, but now we're all in the same boat.